And then you give yourself a round of applause for also coming. You are also very important. And all of you contribute to making him either the flag bearer of the NDC. No, either one of the five and then go on to become the flag bearer of the NPP. I'm sure there are people here from the Western region. If you came from the Western region, uh, shall we uh, say hello to you? You are coming from the Western region. People from the Western region. Anybody from Ashanti? Oh, there's one member from the Western region. Two, three. Hello and good morning and welcome to Accra. Those of you coming from uh, Greater Accra, by hand, see if you can show. Uh -huh. Round of applause for you. You are a lot. Thank you and welcome from the Central region if you are here. Uh, okay, there's another person from the central region, from the eastern region. Wow. Wow, all of you welcome from the Volta region. Hey, what were you saying? I didn't hear you. <laughs> welcome from the Brongahafo region. If you are from Brongahafo, good morning. Good morning to all of you. I'm sure everybody is represented here. Currently, we are live on TV3, and soon we'll be going live on Joy News as well. If you are ready with the musical interlude. Oh, Ashanti Regent, good morning. We are coming from... <laughs> yeah, from the Upper West, Upper East, um, Savannah, good morning to all of you and welcome to Accra. Are we ready with our musical interlude? Are we ready with a musical interlude? If we are, can we have a very brief musical interlude before we introduce uh, the man of the moment? I'm sure we are all familiar with the song. We can sing along.
thank you so, so much. Um, I'm pleased and privileged, and it's time to introduce to you the man of the moment. Currently, we are live on Joy News. So good morning to everybody who's watching us on Joy News. My name is Nanaya Bradford and so we are also live on TV3. Let me say a big welcome to all the media houses that are represented here. From the microphone, I can see Joy News, as I said, ATV, Adum TV, where I used to work. Um, I could see GTV, um, there's XYZ, there's TV3, Atinka. I could also see um, UTV, and then Metro TV, and then City TV, and TV Africa, and then GH1 TV. Um, welcome to all of you. It's time, and the time is now. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, distinguished guests, thank you for making your way today to join in this special event. I know that many of you have come from far to represent every region of our great country. And just before introducing you to our esteemed speaker today, Honorable Francis Engineer Adenimo, allow me. Allow me to tell you a bit about him for those of you who may not know some of the experiences that have made by extraordinary man who will be making an important announcement today. Allow me to give you a few highlights. And it goes. He was born in 1965 and yet to be 58 years. Francis Adenimo got a secondary education at Navrongo Secondary School, O-Level and Kumasi High School for A-Level. In both schools, he was nominated as best academic student uh, in the representative examination. He then obtained his first degree in civil engineering at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, followed by an executive master's degree in public administration from the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. While continuing to remain a member in good standing of the Ghana Institute of Engineering, he acquired knowledge and skills during his professional career development in relevant areas of study from overseas institute in the United States, United Kingdom, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. He has traveled far and wide. Now, some of you may not know that Francis Adenimo has enjoyed developing leadership skills as far back as his school days, being elected to serve as Scripture Union President at Navrongo Secondary. Scripture Union President and Assistant Senior Prefect at Kumasi High School and Student Representative Council President at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He has led before. Then being professionally hired in the public service, he held a number of roles which would most likely also contribute to him being highly effective in his future responsibilities, serving Ghana, a great country. Interestingly, Francis Adenimo was first appointed as public civil servant at the Ministry of Roads and Highways before, and more recently, a two-term elected public servant as member of parliament for Mampong constituency, among other public service with employment records being testament of his competence, loyalty, and dedication. Now, some of you may not know that our friend in the first attempt as leader, leadership nomination contest of MPP, while so relevant or known in 2014, succeeded in placing an enviable third out of seven contestants. He placed an enviable third position. And now, without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome on stage. Honorable Francis Engineer Adenimo. Papo Dende, Papo Dende, Papo Dende, Papo Dende, Papo Dende, Papo Dende, Papo Dende.
much, Madam MC, Nana Yabrefo Danso, for the kind words that you have said about me. Some people never knew a lot of these things about myself. And so I have also gone through the mill to get to this stage in my life. Mr. Chairman, fellow Ghanaians, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the media, invited guests and friends, fellow members of the new patriotic party, allow me to start by conveying my warmth along with the New Year greetings to you all, and to thank you immensely for your presence at this important forum. Thank you for kindly answering my invitation. As we say, there is time or season for occurrences that appear under the sun. So today is a special time that has come rooted in my life journey, a time to share with you my political aspirations. Aspirations dedicated to serving and to improving the lives of all Ghanaians. But as you know, and as they say, the devil is in the details. So I personally think that it is important to present today's detail clearly. Without clarity, there is always the risk of generating wild headlines and generalities that may spark harmful divisiveness and polarization, as we have seen happen at times in other countries. As you come to learn, my leadership is about uniting our amazing energies throughout the entire country. It is about bringing together our individual experiences and inspirations, while also respecting the many differences in our party. We want to foster inclusivity, not divisiveness. This is why it is important that I share with you and through you, the media, to the world, the aspirations and characteristics I consider are required of the next leader who will be entrusted with the helm of the new patriotic party. A leader who will serve the nation along with a renewed governance model needed to serve all Ghanaians in the best possible way in these changing times. As most of you may know, our country goes to the pools in the next 22 months to elect members of the new parliament and the next president of Ghana. With a clear focus on these December 2024 elections, it is important to re-echo the mantra of the new patriotic party, which we hope will resonate with all Ghanaians, break the age. Surely, we can and we shall break these generally unimpressive 
eight-year cycles. We know that the National Democratic Congress will preach and promote the maintenance of the status quo, seeking the attain at all costs, with the main reason to grab power. Or on the other hand, could there be a surprise emergence of a third political force? In my opinion, this is unlikely. The situation, therefore, places the hearts and minds of voters, particularly the undecided voters, at the crossroads in their political decision in the next election in 2024. Some voters have emotionally declared that they may choose not to exercise their civic responsibility in December 2024. But I believe that the proposed program we have carefully crafted over the last year to truly serve the country, which I am announcing today on behalf of our growing team of truly serving and caring and talented individuals from all regions throughout Ghana will tip the scale in favor of the new patriotic party. This program we are proposing today will indeed incite the people of Ghana to break the eight, the eight-year political cycle that have been subjected to between the MPP and the NDC since 1993. As we say, life is not a game, and politics should not, as such, be played as if it were a power grab game. My growing team and I are committed to making Ghanaian proud of having with exercise the appropriate choice for leader in these particular times. The 2024 elections, while it is primarily a Ghanaian affair, will also signal to the world how consolidated and lasting our democratic experiment truly is. It is for this reason that I urge all stakeholders mindful groups as well as individuals to approach the 2024 milestone with a, mind, a mindset of peace, dissipating any accumulated bile acrimonies and unhealthy rancor. I am particularly focused on the work ahead and I believe in our abilities as a people to pass the test and to prove that we have the innovative spirit within our party to shine once again. There is no denying of that fact, as things have been standing till now, that either the MPP or the NDC may be poised to win the 2024 elections. However, with today's announcement, as you will see over the next few months, there is a growing movement that is calling for a robust MPP leadership that will renew our party, a renewal that will lead the country on a trajectory of prosperity for all. We want to be well positioned to gain the trust of voters in the next national elections. As a highly motivated and well-organized team, we believe that we have what it takes to break the eight-year genes, which has punctuated and in retrospect that occasionally brought unnecessary difficulties 
that have impacted the country in our electoral history since the onset of the Fourth Republic. The NDC, on the other hand, may have sufficiently communicated its readiness to simply snatch power come 2024, with no clear and viable ideas as to how to make each Ghanaian attain a better life. Clearly, the battle lines have been drawn between the NDC and the MPP. With the battle lines drawn, may I pause to ask the question? And for, of course, this leads me to ask the question. Can the MPP, in fact, break the eight and be awarded a new mandate? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my straightforward answer is, and I don't seek to quote any outstanding world leader, the answer is big yes. Yes, we can. Yes, it is indeed possible. But my friends, this is contingent upon three main conditions which we need to satisfy to break the eight. And condition number one, first and foremost, is to ensure the internal unity within our party. This means providing all members a reason to feel at home and to be proud to be part of our renewed party. This, my friends, will maximize our strength for the political task at hand for 2024. To achieve this, I urge all party leadership structure from the national through the region through the constituency, through the electoral areas, to the polling station, to the many members of our party, members who do not hold any positions in the party now, that we foster unity amongst the rank and file of our party. We can certainly learn from the lessons of painful outcomes we experienced in the 2008, 2012, and 2020 elections, which frankly caused our party to suffer as a result of disunity. To win the trust of Ghanaians, every member of the party is encouraged to foster unity. Second condition, improving and consolidating the performance of the current NPP-led government. Indeed, the government performance, in my opinion, is the main deciding factor in the minds and hearts of Ghanaian voters. It has a huge impact on the outcome of elections. Again, as we witness this, in the 2000, 2008, and 2016 general elections, where there was the eight-year cycle in the 2000, 2008, 2016, the impact of government performance on the elections outcome. That is what I'm talking about. I would therefore strongly encourage His Excellency, the Ekufuadu-led administration, to work relentlessly to address the most pressing socio-economic challenges that are now caging our country. And the third condition to enable us break the eight is to allow all MPP delegates to assess each aspirant, prospective aspirant, in order to select the most suitable person to lead the party forward as its presidential <laughs> candidate. A 
It is therefore critical that the selection process be duly respected. And I'll say more on this point. Given these three conditions, we have come to the conclusion that a roadblock will be inadvertently created for ourselves as a party if MPP delegates decide to choose a face that recognizably may be caught in the so-called so fatigue web. The question has been brought up on a number of occasions. Would it not be the best solution here? Be a fresh new face, a face that nonetheless brings the needed experience and maturity with both the private and public sectors, whilst also beaming with hope and enthusiastic energy to serve the Ghanaian people? In my opinion, the prevailing circumstances of our party now require a new face as the next presidential candidate. And I say the new face to win the 2023 MPP flag bearer contest. Mr. Chairman, it is important before proceeding further to point out the characteristics of the new face to win and whom, what characteristics that new face must possess or should offer to the MPP rank and file and to the Ghanaian people. These characteristics will generate vibrant enthusiasm with the rank and file members of the party. We are all poised for the revival, for the revitalization, and the rejuvenation of the MPP, and thereby enabling us to break the eight. I hope you can agree with me that these characteristics should include, but not limited, to the following. One, just being a natural unifier. That new face must just be a natural unifier, not an artificial unifier. The second characteristic, that new face must have an unblemished character and a history of service. You need to have an unblemished character so that people can testify about you, people can witness about you. And so you need that outstanding character for people to know, and then they can testify. And then the third characteristic is that that new face brings the new energy and the fresh appeal to successfully harness, harness the challenging times and opportunities ahead. Mr. Chairman, a fractured party or a fractured MPP cannot win in 2024. It is therefore critical for all members to choose a candidate who is an unrelentless unifier, a leader who is not trapped in any factional exchanges. It is indeed disheartening to know that certain factions have been emerging for some time now in our party. And I am not afraid to say this loud and clear that those factions have become, over time, an entrenched phenomenon that frankly has no place in our party. Simply put, such factions can only cause a devastating erosion of our relevance in the eyes of electors. <laughs> Who may seek solutions elsewhere. These factions stemming essentially from a herd mentality are reprehensible and ought to be discouraged if we seek to be appealing once again to Ghanaians. It is therefore fundamental, to put it mildly, 
to dissipate all attempts that spark baseless fashional fires ahead of 2024. This, in my view, must be addressed and resolved as a priority. Unifying our members with an appealing program will ensure that each contribution under the flag is welcomed and celebrated. I therefore invite all members of our party to spearhead these efforts to develop a sustained unity, which will then enable us all, as a renewed party, to achieve great things together for the benefit of all Ghanaians. So to summarize, most importantly, we need a new wave, a new face, a face that represents a genuine movement that provides hope for those members who may have been disgruntled within the party. We need a leader who can re-energize the grassroots for the odious task of breaking the eight. I think that by now, many of you may be itching to hear a formal announcement as to who this candidate could possibly be. Let me throw the question back to you. My distinguished viewers and guests here today, if we agree that the standards that I have enumerated here are essential for winning 2024, they, that they are essential to break the eight, then who, who then would you think this candidate could and should be amongst all those who have shown interest to lead the party? Now, in seeking to designate the flag bearer of the party, and then to have this person or leader seek to win the trust of Ghanaians as president of Ghana, and please excuse me for seeming to be slightly professorial. You know, sometimes you want to be professorial in the academic room. So excuse me if I'm sounding a little bit professorial at this important point. And before you actually entrust such a person with the responsibility to lead our movement and our party so that we can break the eight, there are three fundamental questions that each delegate should ask those three fundamental questions. The first one is the candidate legally and constitutionally qualified for such a position? Question number two, is the candidate morally fit for such a position? Question number three, is the candidate physically and mentally sound for such a position while having the experience and maturity to truly, to truly and efficiently serve the best interests of each Ghanaian. And so in key, we say, Ose, Ofata, na ubet mi aye. And allow me to say it in key. Nananum na teti hey. I am humbled, Mr. Chairman, I am humbled that my esteemed team has assessed my qualifications and motivations using these three criteria. And driven by my personal conviction and confident that my values and my professional background can be useful in shaping the necessary initiatives that will significantly improve our country 
and coupled with the clarion call I have been receiving over these last years from our party members, rank and file, and from the wide consultations and sound advice from the elders of the party, I, Adeinimo, and now listen to me, I have thereby decided and I am hereby officially announcing my candidacy to be elected as the next flag bearer of the new patriotic party in the independent election. The, doubt, the doubting Thomases, today your doubt has been removed. I am standing before you, before the Ghanaian people, through the press, and giving this declaration or this announcement. And I know what that it is coming from the bottom of my heart and the deep mind that I have. As you may know, and I just want to give you a reflection. As you may know, this adventure is not novel to me. In 2014, when I made my first attempt to be the MPP flag bearer, I came in third. And I recall how I combed through the nooks and crannies of this wonderful country of ours, meeting amazing people And I'll tell you, in 2014, most places when I went, they will ask me, but where were you? Where have you been hiding? Ah, you have the potential. We know you have the potential. But in 2014, they said they will consider pedig pedigree. But I know that now it is the combination of the potential and the pedigree. Even though I did not win that time, I nonetheless had been given the opportunity to sponsor many orphan constituency, constituencies and volunteer groups, especially in the Volta region, amongst others. And to help ensure the MPP was awarded the presidency in 2016. So I campaigned together with our sitting president day and night in 2016. And that was my joy. And the joy was that the MPP secured power in 2016 with the effort of all of us. <laughs> Although I was somewhat sidelined in the appointment of the current MPP-led government of President Kufuado, I have remained loyal to our party because, excuse me, let me take that portion again. I have remained loyal to our party's core cause, to which I have been dedicated to since its inception. So whether appointment in public office or no appointment in public office, the MPP is for all of us to serve. It is worth noting that every success story has a failure portion or component so as to how to make it complete. Would you not say so? Domestically, the political life stories of Ejekum Kufour, of Atta Mills, and of the current president, Echi Nana Ekufuado, are shining examples to me. And internationally, Barack Obama's political life story is a source of personal inspiration and motivation. So allow me to share with you my vision for the MPP as we move forward. And I promise you four things. 
if I'm giving the mandate to lead our great party. And I promise you four things that I'll commit myself to ensuring and into doing. One, I will continue to be an effective resource-oriented unifier while upholding and applying the values of justice, mercy, and honesty to support the rank and file of our party members. Two, I will ensure that resources are fairly and equitably distributed. Yeah. Yeah. Among the rank and file. So if I deserve one Ghana city and somebody deserves 10 Ghana cities, I should not be denied of my one Ghana city for it to be added to the, ten, the person who deserves the 10 Ghana cities. Under my leadership, fairness, equity, under the values of justice, mercy, honesty, shall prevail in our party. And the third one, we are aware that in some constituencies, our party, we do not have permanent offices owned by our own party. We rent some uh, places as our party offices. So if I get the mandate to lead the party, I will commit myself to ensuring that party offices in every constituency will be a permanent place for us and owned by the party. And four, I will help to establish viable economic ventures in every constituency that will enable each constituency to generate sustained income. As expressed by the ruler or the leader of Dubai, for those of you who have been to Dubai, the ruler or leader of Dubai is called Sheikh Al Maktoum. Sheikh Al Maktoum. And this is what Sheikh said in his famous book titled Flashes of Thoughts. Life was created simple, and it is important to leave it as such. So there must be simplicity in everything, in all spheres of life. One of the basic functions of government is to contribute to enabling its citizens to achieving satisfactory levels of happiness. This becomes possible by applying simple solutions to our relatively simple problems without adding layers of bureaucratic complexity when it is possible. Here is something worth considering. Certain socioeconomic challenges confronting our nation are actually and indeed relatively simple, and therefore their solutions ought to be simple as well. However, people in positions of authority knowingly or in unintentionally, may often refrain from solving problems with simplicity. This can be due to self-inflicted pain lacking in our public organizations that may result from personal greed, selfishness, arrogance, ego, you name it. This is when organizations tend to resort to inducing artificial complex solutions. All that I'm saying is that if life was created simple and it is important to leave it as such, why do we want to complex ourselves with solutions to our simple problems? And the reason is that because of the human nature of being greedy, selfish, your ego, arrogance, the simple things will block it and will introduce complexities and not find the solutions to our problems. Insightful leadership knows this and can help make things simple and easily manageable in all public organizations. And this will help generate significant time and financial savings. The fundamental approach is part of our plan. Mr. Chairman, at this juncture, because tangibles are important, as I mentioned earlier, and for the electors to consider, I would like to outline 
my seven point development policy or strategy for our beloved country. And for want of time, I will just highlight the main broad plans and then later we will communicate with you the details of the plans. The first one is on agriculture and food security. Man must eat. Everybody must eat. So if you start talking about how you are going to space, how you will go to space on a rocket that you have no idea about, or how you dive and try to get to the bottom of the sea, meanwhile you are hungry. So man must eat. So agriculture, food security is the foremost in my plan and in the plan of our team. And so the summary of it is that we have very good climatic conditions that we should be able to produce our food to feed ourselves. And I would say that at no point in time should any Ghanaian go to school, go to work, go to bed hungry. We should be able to feed ourselves. So agriculture and food security is key. Point number two, or policy number two, if you have eaten, then you need some level of education or health. So these two, two social services are also crucial. Education and health. And so we will also focus on education. And in terms of education, we'll look at technical, vocational, and skills training programs. That will also be a priority under my watch if I'm given the mandate to lead our beloved country. <laughs> so, our government will coordinate with all major stakeholders to ensure that we improve on our educational system. And then on health, we need a healthy citizen. We need a healthy citizen for our nation. And so we say, healthy citizens who study and work in a sustained manner contribute to happiness among one another in their communities. This also contributes to local and national productivity. Our government will assume the responsibility in helping Ghanaians to maintain and improve their health. We also do this by ensuring that high quality healthcare services are accessible and affordable for all nation, for all nationwide whilst working to reduce health risk you have eaten you have gone to school you have good health what again you need employment so the fourth point is on employment and entrepreneurship and i say that everybody must come on board either you create the job for yourself, you employ yourself, or you employ somebody, or somebody also employs you. And somebody employing you could be a government organization, it can be a private organization, and then you also employing somebody, you become an employer. So that is how we will look at the employment and entrepreneurship in our country together. Then having been employed, what do we need again? We need to have an infrastructure for our country. And our infrastructure need to be developed. Most of it, when we travel outside Ghana, in the developed world, whilst you are airborne and you are about touching down, you can see from the view how developed they are, the symmetry of their development, the consistency of their development. When you are returning to Ghana and you enter the African space, and you see how it is, you become miserable. But ladies and gentlemen, we have the opportunity that we can change it. So under inf enhancing national and regional infrastructure, we we'll look at transportation that includes road, our road network to improve the conditions of our road network. If we have to dualize our roads where possible, we we carry out dualization. We have to look at the appropriate materials to be used 
in our road construction industry. We have to encourage our local contractors to build their capacity. Not only in the transportation sector, but telecommunications too. For technology, we need to ensure that telecommunication is also looked at in our overall policy framework. We also need our housing and water systems to improve on the quality, and all is to ensure that there is a better life for all of us. The sixth point is to have a fundamental restructuring of governance for transparency, a major improvement in public service culture and structures to our complexities. We respect and believe in the people who hold delegated authority to run organizations that serve Ghanaians in all socioeconomic sectors. In this regard, we are committed to an organizational reform placed at the center of decision making that will bring increasingly useful services to our people. This will also reduce the concentration of power at the executive level. So we propose where it is necessary to conduct constitutional reforms, we should not be hesitant to do so. We know that some work has been done, and then we'll have to look at it and improve on it in terms of constitutional uh, amendments. With an effectively functioning governance system, we believe that development and the consequences of good governance will logically flow. And through a thoughtful recall of the public sector, which also includes the reduction of complex red tapes, we can envisage an overall cost-efficient and resource-oriented public service. And in terms of the public service, permit me to say this. The principles of the science of public administration, and of course, I'm alluding to this because of my master's background, executive master's background in public administration. The principles of the science of public administration, as espoused by former American president, Mr. Woodrow Wilson, will be applied without particular focus on reinventing government where it is relevant to do so. If it is not broken, then we do not need to fix it. So we need an efficient, effective, efficient, resource-oriented public service. And this, we shall be committed to ensuring that we achieve that in our government or administration. And let me also make this point under the public service. And at the end, more led administration will carry out national budgeting from first principles. We will no longer fall into the trap of following the usual incremental approaches to budgeting. And for these those in the public sector, they know it. Because every time, let's apply 5%, 10%, 15%. But when we get the opportunity, we have to go to the first principles. What do you need in your organization? What do you need at your region? What do you need here? Then we cost everything. That is the first principles, budgeting, and for which we will be committed to ensuring. All local and foreign partners will appreciate being able to play on the field where the budget choices are realistic. And finally, one critical element, the seventh component is on accountability. If you have an efficient, effective, resource-oriented public service, then you must ensure accountability. So an increased public accountability through improved scrutiny and the regular reporting will be conducted by competent independent bodies. And this will provide the bedrock to ensure the optimal and responsible use of the nation's scarce public resources. It will also care deliberate. There is an eighth point, but that eighth point is deferred for now at a later time when the mandate is secured and we are into the competition in 2024, then I'll come back to the Ghanaian people to talk about that eighth point. 
or the AIF policy. Mr. Chairman, one of the core values of the new patriotic party is to uphold democratic principles, whether internal or external to the party. With this comes the responsibility to ensure a healthy and fair competition in the selection of party officers at all levels of the party. So for those of you who are pulling station executives, you went through an electioneering process. Coordinators, you went through an electioneering process. Constituency executives, regional executives, national executives. And so for the flag bearer, there we, we are also going through a process to elect who becomes the next flag bearer. In this regard, let me, allow me to suggest respect, respectfully, all those strongly, that it is paramount that every MPP entity involved in the selection of the next leader should ensure the conduct of a free, fair, and transparent flag bearer elections throughout the entire span of the contest. I'm talking here about the National Council, National Council of Elders, National Executive Committee, Regional Executive Committees, Constituency Executive Committees, Electoral Area Coordinators, Police Station Executives. The party's constitution provides time frames to deliver fair elections, and it is important that we fully comply with these timeline provisions. One area which can and should be improved is a possible special college election, should it become necessary for us to go through this stage. It is essential to remind ourselves that the objective of the special college election is to shortlist the number of aspirants or nominees to five. It is not intended, and let me repeat, for the special college election, and some of you say superdelegates or special voting. The objective of the special college election, it is not intended to elect or predict the eventual winner of the main flag bearer contest throughout the, inter throughout the process. So if it becomes necessary for the party to go through the special college election, the idea is that we are going to do shortlisting and get the five people who will go into the main contest. And of course, for which we all know and you all believe, the gentleman before you here, Adenimo, will be one of the people to be shortlisted. <laughs> Let me remember that the, the party experienced this process only once in its history, and that was in the 2014 flag bearer contest, when the special college election was indeed required, and in retrospect, certain important lessons were learned from that ordeal. I will therefore be submitting a formal resolution to the party executives in the near future at the appropriate time. For now, it is not yet time. Nominations have been open, so you are not a stakeholder, but when nominations open, and we have applied, then we become stakeholders, then we can put in any petition that should deal with the requirement to conduct special college elections. In practical terms, campaigning should be allowed for six months, to the very least, which is in accordance with the party's constitution. So if we do require this exceptional stage this year in the elections process, the adjusted procedure we propose will certainly be useful cost-effective, time-saving, and also ensure free, fair, and transparent process. And while we are subjecting, and while we are on the subject of improving the election process, may I also caution, in the presence of this wide audience, that this particular provision in our party's constitution, which allows the National Executive Committee to make amends, should not be used to create favoritism in the process. Such initiatives could lead to fomenting disquiet and divisiveness, which we are actually seeking to dissipate. The party's fortunes in 2024 and beyond depend on our vigilance, good governance for the, for the nation's starts here, and our party's own good governance. Mr. Chairman, simply put, free, fair, Transparent flag bearer contests must be ensured and be seen as devoid of any undemocratic tendencies and vices.
Once we preach unity, with unity comes with what? Justice. And so, if there is justice, there will be fairness, there will be freedom, there will be transparency. And indeed, our motto, the party's motto is development in freedom. So whatever we do at the background, we know that we must ensure freedom. And that is why I said free, fair, transparent elections or process is required. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I'm just about coming to the conclusion of my address. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, I formally serve notice here today that I, Adeinimo, I know some of you want to use honorable engineer Adeinimo. Sometimes it becomes too long. Sure, that is correct. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I serve notice here today that I am ready, I am able, and I am willing to lead our great party as the next flag bearer and to humbly serve our beloved country as the next president from 2025. Mr. allow me to emphasize that our country and our party, MPP, needs a fresh, new face, an audacious leadership objectives that will propel us into a more prosperous future. This is the direction our movement has determined for this leadership campaign, and I accept the challenge, a new face enabling the MPP to break the eight. Indeed, by electing a leader who is determined to do what it takes, will help Ghanaians to live up to their full potential, this fresh energy ought to come from within our party. And the gentleman before you is prepared to answer the call. It takes the decisive and they're determined. And let me repeat, once we want that change to come from within, it takes the decisive and the determined will of the ordinary people, and some who are gathered here today, for this change to happen. And surely, together, we shall succeed. Together, let us break the eight. Together, let us make it happen. Ade Nimonie. Ade Nimonie. Ade Nimonie. Ade Nimonie. Break the eight in here. Ade Nimonie. Ade Nimonie. Are they any money? No, are they any more? Long live. Long live the media. Long live New Patriotic Party. Long live Ghana. Thank you for your attention and listening to me. Now, I was here for Moma Mekwina made the American in Yanano, Memono Tofa, Ewo Chi, Kassem. The American in Yanane said, 2024, you're better to Abba. You're being in Russia, but you're four for fro, you're being your man penning for fro. And when you're better to pen so be a Ghana phone be cry na be mu abu e ma omo ti me die ahom ti e ka se a 2024 dey me dey me nto aba ade ntia e ya be mu buo nanso dey nkranhyesem wa ho ne se 
eni mfufra onyame ahisha mayen a wo ye david anu owo esere nu su no ona na o ba wo di sai ni mfufro ni ba di enunti ma abemubu ono ye nyai na ye hu se dia koy akoy ye chini de ya pa ho na emum de eda yanim ena edo so se impo achia na emu ye na ye bi nyina no ye beti mi aye ama no aye ye me de no ma mi ensa bitu ho a me pese mpp delegate bia abato ye aye betu e eni pa domo a mo betu ho no mo buru over 200,000 across the nation around 200 208,000 to almost 210,000 Ashaman constituents in Guam over 1,500. Ashaman for more ha. Enunti, ni ni na ni se ya ma ya ni ena ho ya ma ya ni na o ni enshia ni en carry obi biara en peninfo a ya ba ni ni na ano ya en carry obi a ni enshia se why eni ya di ne ko e kona noa break the eighty no. Ebebem na ye die enim se owura a ogina mo anim ene one mo kasa one gana fo nyina ye kasa no mo ma ne kwan a e wo mpp mu a break the eight no ebeba so meni so adi huna me di won ma party no me di atudwa meni so adi huna me di won ma gana nsem enson me di atudwa se de be ya aban Aban bia ni titu ni dumadia ni se obema anigie abatimamfuo nti se timamfuo ni anigie a na chese aban modern mono nti ani ana enko ye na etosini ana opanyina odi dubai ano oka se eh enipa ye fa kwan ketikete so na bo onipa nti ade nti na wo mfa kwan ketikete so na mfa ntena se tem bia ye pese ye no ma ne yesu ye keka bom na ye bebre na ye hu na nim ene na kire na enso abrabo we e ye simple e ye tietia eno nti enne anopai kasa me ne mu aka e wa ha no minim se ato mpp fo akuma so ato gana fo akuma so ya bato aye be koy ye be hye se emu beda ho na se emu da ho a ye wiya ye nyina de anije eni odo eni opepa eni bedi de obeba abeye ye next flag bearer the leader of the new patriotic party ade eni monie ade eni monie ade eni monie onyame ensa ye nyina meda masiku For this, don't worry. Uh, we'll have time to play all the songs that we have to play. Um, we'll be going off uh, soon on Joy News. Uh, we are on Joy News Live and TV3 Live. Um, another round of applause for Honorable Adenimo. Thank you. My takeouts from his speech was the fact that you have to keep knocking. Perseverance is always the key. Otrese kufua epemiye. Na ode mabro hufwe jana pemiye. Edru baby ye biye no. Males pemiye. Na nado pemiye. Wa pem pem pemiye na anfa. E na males pemiye fa ma no. 2008. En pemina sunu ogusu a woyo. Ya e ne yi woyo kwa ense. E kwa ene bebiye. Na gana fwe tu miye hunu mabo. Now abo pru mo abo 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 within the party NPP no won be bie no the other take out is the fact that he's talking about a new face na je say wo mo aka e ya kwa duba ko no wo mo no kwen bi so wo mo ka ban ho wo nya minister no advice wo nya vice an wo e bo chairman wo nya bo chairman na je say kwen bi as wo mo chiche mi ade a enu ti na wo hie nim fofura e betimi e di party na nim kan na gana fu awu o mmoba na ya da ni mo 
then some are what to do, and I make it be So therefore, it will lead us into the party jingle. NPP had a party jingle for Nanado. Afterwards, and uh, what they uh, as a papa be a mate, what they did in any bragana for to abamano. So we'll launch a party song or a campaign song for Honorable Ade Nimo. Before then, let me introduce Wosu Group from Angel TV uh, called Diamond Dancers from Wosu. If you are ready, Diamond Dancers, yeah, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here because of an invitation extended to me by my good friend, Engineer Francis Adainimo. I'm here also as a founding member of the New Patriotic Party. <laughs> to use this opportunity to make a statement which will have a significant and positive impact on the fortunes of our great party. As we seek to maintain our great tradition. Once again, we have come to the rank and file of our party. The new patriotic party. To solicit their votes in the leadership race of the party. The contestants are many and they will come with promises some of which are unrealistic. It is not worthy that at a meeting with the outgoing German ambassador to Ghana at Osu Castle during the first term of office of President Kufuor, Kufuor willingly disabused Ghanaians of the promises he made during, during the campaign prior to the December 7th year 2000 elections. He said, the campaign platform promises cannot fulfill or cannot be fulfilled when you are in office because oftentimes you are emotionally charged. But the reality when in office and confronted with a myriad of problems against the limited resources available calls for immediate rethinking of the promises made during the campaign. This singular act of matured leadership made President Kufu focus on the new path of policy direction that guided the programs he undertook throughout his presidency. A rare display of integrity, professionalism, and good governance. Now, you see me here today because when I see our dynamo, I know we still have hope in our party. This is a man of integrity, accountability, professionalism, and humility. I 
apart from these key areas that I've mentioned, is the only one who can unite this party. <laughs> now let me warn the delegates. This is just a brief statement that I'm making. You'll see more of me. I want delegates to be very careful. If you miss this man, you will regret terribly. This is a man with enormous experience and he understands governance. This is a man who is peaceful and will not run this country now, down. This is a man the whole nation will follow. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Nyaho Tamaklo. Fearless and speaks his mind at all times. As I'm okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, party na bomo, party na bomo. Ne doctor Adeni mo. Wa si nipa bebre ene epe. Na wa mundi na platform swa. Eni en samdi e. Promise yi. Wa mundi tebri anu wa mundi ya sen ha. Wa tamnu wa diya si ha. En su anu eni mse wa mundi mi nyo. Nu wa keka nu hu Na kwa yen sen bebre. Na ye ra kufuwa. Diye uwa kufuwa. Bra wa ye president. Ne be kaya ye se. Tole biya gbe eshi. E tu misi yo mo so bra wa mua campaign platform. Oba bay mwa na who the reality on the ground. And to po bia wa no kre dini wa kano kre wa si awa ya ne ya de ni mo. Monsa monsem e fama doctor doctor nya moha tamaku. It is time to launch the Afran raising that is friends of a day ni mo. If you are ready, um, the platform is yours. Thank you, my dear sister. I'm friends of Adai Nimo Association um, is a limited by guarantee organization. We've come together, you know, to seek ways to support Honorable Engineer Adai Nimo in his quest to lead the country. We were all here, we heard Dr. Nyaho Tamaklu, a patriot, a founding member of the party, testifying to the good deeds of Honorable Adainimo. He is the person the country needs now, and you and I will have to find a way to support him for this quest to be a reality. We will want to uh, seek your financial support. Campaign is an expensive exercise. One man cannot do it alone. So we are asking that we will all, in our little way, support him so that he can send his message across the country. We are not looking for you know, people with deep pockets to contribute so huge, we're looking for any little thing that you can contribute to make the campaign a success. This will provide him the opportunity to lead the country by truly serving all Ghanaians. Um, we have a mobile money um, kind of a merchant number. The merchant name, Friends of Adainimo Association um, Limited by Guarantee, LBG. The merchant number or the merchant ID is 355-290, 355-290. The Momo number 
is 059 We will call on all traders, all business people. We have one good man that the country can trust. Most of us are God-fearing people. And we are told that when the good man leaves, the people rejoice. Is that the case? Is that the case? Is that the case? Yes. Then you're going to help us find that good man, support that good man to lead this country so that we will all rejoice. I thank you. All right, so now I would um, open the floor for my colleagues to ask questions. It wasn't part of the program, but um, we are asking for that. So therefore, we we'll allot five minutes um, uh, for my colleagues to ask questions. Then we'll bring the program to an end. So if you are ready, if my colleagues here are ready to ask their questions, if a, a microphone could be provided to um, a gentleman on my left from TV3, your name and then your question. My name is Joseph Armstrong. I work with TV3. Yes, um, this way. All right, that's fine. All right, my name is Joseph Armstrong. I work with TV3. Um, just two quick questions. Um, the first question has to do with what we are currently battling with as a country where we are talking about bondholders. They are asking individual bondholders currently to um, uh, part of the money so that uh, government will be able to restructure the economy. We are asking you, based on what the finance minister is saying, if you happen to be the president in this current state, what will be your decision, what will be your action? Would you go the way the finance minister is going or you do otherwise? The last question I want to ask is, uh, we didn't hear much of uh, the current president, that Nanado, about his achievement, what he has done, what you like, what you don't like. What exactly, in your own way, you think the current president has done that you are going to stand on to build your government? Thank you. Uh, no, um, you can ask your question. Three at a time. <laughs> Actually, my name is Charles Mensah. But I make a trick, I can sentiment. My name is Charles Mensah, I'm a sick thank Thank you very much. And I see Anna Black Stars. The code in Kugo, Black Garaz is so. I could in Kugo. It's in Anna Kwanswano. Yes, Sabas. She. Good morning. Good morning. My name is James. I work with Jordan. I want to find out from uh, Mr. Adainimo. What's your general assessment? So that was the launch of Francis Adainimo's campaign for the 2024 presidential um, uh, you know, primaries of the NPP. And that's how we wrap the special, the extended version of uh, News Desk. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll bring you joy news today with Aisha Ibrahim. <laughs> 